Right, so I was testing um, this board for an upcoming installation. I found an interesting effect. Um, basically what this board is, it's an array of these um, nodes, which are, um, each node is a, a bunch of LEDs and a light sensor, and it's designed to be able to detect shadows being cast from ambient light. Um, obviously it turns the LED off briefly to take a light sample, but it's a, it's a little cluster of LEDs and a PIC12F 1822. Um, these are basically just used as uh, intelligent sensors. The, the behavior isn't autonomous. There's a central processor on the board. Um, which actually controls it all. So each of these is just a, it, it reads back a light le level and you send it an intensity value. Um, one reason for doing like this is it really simplifies the board layout because all that's, all that's connected between these is just all on a single common bus. Um, so um, the only thing that's routed around the board is basically power and a single data line. Um, the way this works, if we look at the, um, the scope, the mastering control of it sends out this burst of data and this is the actual intensity levels that he wants to display and then each node in turn replies with its date with its um, intensity data um, this is actually done by a time slot so it, each node has its own individual ID so obviously it uses that to look in this data packet to know which led to respond to but also it uses it to generate a time slot so that each one re replies in a specific time now, what I noticed was, um, obviously these, to keep things simple, these are using the internal RC oscillator, which is about normally about 1% in practice, it's quite often better than that. But um, because this thing's got to run over a fairly wide temperature range, because it's an outdoor installation, um, I wanted to add a facility where it would actually calibrate the um, oscillator if, if it went out too far. So um, if you look on the, on the protocol, there's actually a little gap between the first byte, uh, the sort of single byte, and then the, the uh, intensity bytes. And it actually measures the time of that gap. And if necessary, it uh, adjusts the um, osc oscillator frequency. So obviously the main thing that, that can affect this is temperature. So I was just playing around to um, um, just a quick way of adjusting temperatures to put my finger on it. But what I noticed was, if I put my finger on this first one, as I push my finger quite hard on it, and I just the time, yeah, the, the timing drifts quite a lot. Now, firstly, I thought, well, you know, that, that's clearly too fast to be um, a, tem a, a temperature effect. I just sort of pull that back so you can see what that's doing. So I do the first one, then the second one. You'll see that second packet drift. Um, so I thought, well, yeah, perhaps it's capacitance. So I just tried it with an inch, yeah, just with a screwdriver, and yeah, I saw exactly the same effect. So. Um, it's a bit curious. I think it must be just that you know, by pressing on the chip, it's producing sort of stresses across the die that's causing some change in the um, RC oscillator behaviour. I'd, I'd presumably the capacitance, I would have thought. Um, it doesn't actually do very much if you just flex the PCB, uh, which is obviously fairly fortunate because you don't really want your oscillator to change when you're sort of, if a ball gets flexed. Um, although you might find that not, you know, obviously an SO package gives you a certain, you know, the, the length of the lead gives you a certain amount of resistance to that, but you may find on something like a DFN package that you might see this effect with ball flexing more. Obviously if you're, if you're, if you're pressing hard, hard down on this, um, this SO you're sort of putting a lot of stress onto the leads and the lead frame, so I'm sure that's what's doing it. But I mean, that's, yeah, that's something I hadn't really encountered before. And in fact, yeah, that effect is at least as much as temperature if I just spray some freezer on it. Um, you know, it's a similar effect. You'll notice some jumps. That this does actually implement the calibration, so what you'll see is it will get it will get later and later, and then it will suddenly jump back as the calibration kicks in and corrects it. So if I give it a heavy dose of freezer, so it's going in there, and then it's all just jumping back in again as it warms up again. That will drift out, but then it will jump back as it gets as it corrects itself. But uh, so it's an interesting, uh, interesting effect. I've not really noticed it before. Sort of pick, picks are pressure sensitive. Uh, I don't know whether you can actually use that for anything um, constructive, but it's uh, worth knowing about if you've got a particularly, for example, if you're using them on a thin, yeah, a thin PCB that might get flexed or something, or might get stressed. Um, something's worth knowing about. A little detail on this this board. Um, so the, the final installation can have about a hundred of these boards on it in it. So it's got a fairly big installation. Um, the obviously these picks. And the one th one reason I like picks is that you can buy them pre-programmed from microchip. So yeah, these are all all the chips have their um, 
firmware pra factory programmed, or at least a bootload, obviously because they're on the same bus, I can just upload the firmware to all these picks in one hit across that bus with the uh, bootloader that's built in. Um, but obviously each one has its own internal node address, so the question is, well, how do you program, you know, there's 55 nodes on this board, um, how do you program the node addresses? Well, the nice thing is, I mean, this actually applies to quite a few situations where you've got some sort of local sensing. Here we've got a light sensor. So what I do is I can just send a command that says, if you can see light, then your address 13. So literally I just send a command that says address 13 and sort of shine some light at it. And obviously the one nice thing is because this board's symmetrical, the test jig is just another one of these boards placed face down. So it can light up the pixel, send the address in turn, but also test both the LED and the light sensor all automatically, which is a quite nice feature. Um, and in fact, you can actually be a bit more, be a bit more clever than that. Uh, you know, in practice, I think that this will test probably only take about a couple of seconds to go through all the um, nodes because you know, this thing's got about 60 frames a second frame rate, so you could do the whole lot in a few seconds. But um, there is another refinement that uh, I might do if I can be bothered. Um, instead of doing each one in turn, what you can do is you can send a command that says, you know, you can, for example, split the address into a row and column. So you can say, if you can see light, then your column address is this. If you can, and then the second pass, so the first pass you do a lot like a vertical sweep, then a horizontal sweep saying, if you can see light, then your column address is that. So by just a simple um, X, Y sweep, you can set all the addresses, um, which reduces yeah, the number of operations to sort of X times Y from X times Y to X plus Y. And if you want to really go overboard, you could actually reduce it even further by just doing it in binary. So you simply say, um, you know, if you have bit zero, so if you can see light, then bit zero in your address is set. So in this case, with with six operations, you can actually set all the node addresses with just six six operations, one for each bit. Obviously, you need to be a little, little bit careful to make sure there's no light leakage from one to the other. But um, yeah, the, the, I've used a similar technique for, for other situations where you need to tell a device, yes, where it is, where where it physically is. Or, or, on a board or in a, a string, for example, and as long as you've got some way, you know, some way of talking to that particular node, yeah, yeah, this is particularly true when, you know, when everything's on, on a single bus. Um, you need some way to actually sort of distinguish that particular node. So it can either be, um, in some cases, I've used the thing where you literally you just pull a pin low, send a command, and that tells it where that address is. But you know, any situation where you've got some sort of perhaps array of sensors or you know, something like that. Um, you know, the, it's quite a neat way of actually um, defining the physical position by actually using its own built-in um, sensing capability. So the LEDs do actually go a lot brighter. I'll turn the LEDs down quite a lot to avoid freaking the camera out. If I turn this up to full brightness, it might get a little bit ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> 